Truth is making a comeback. America's Top Stories with Lisa K. Donner. Anyway you cut it, political junkies got their fill this week as 20 Democratic candidates for president participated in a lively, if sometimes odd, debate. Actually, there were two debates over two evenings. Both aired on NBC and were held in Miami, Florida. Overall, many of the candidates spoke about turning the U.S. from a republic into a full-blown socialist state. Others sounded angry, offering an alternate reality where the middle class is hopelessly lost in a horrible economic downturn. And then there were the flakes. Author Marianne Williamson talked about love casting out all hate, whatever. In our Girls Just Want to Have Fun segment, this week we take a look at the best of the left. That is the wacky and amazing things that came out of the mouths of Democrats during the first night of the debate. Of course, I asked Sarah Cowgill, our national correspondent from the heartland, to join us. Welcome to Truth TV, Sarah. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Always a good time. Or in the words of Beto, hola, como estas? Hola, mi amigo, es bueno. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what did you make of that? <laughs> OK. Oh, he dodged a question artfully by by speaking in Spanish, and nobody knew that he dodged the question so artfully. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The other thing is there were way too many people trying to speak Spanish that probably should have just spoke English. Yeah. How, uh, how many times did the Spanish uh, speakers come out? We had Castro, Booker, and then, then there was Beto who stole his thunder. <laughs> I, I thought Booker was having an apoplectic fit. <laughs> and I think it was primarily because Beto started speaking Spanish before Booker did. So, so whose Spanish was worse? Oh, definitely Castro. <laughs> I mean, the, the one Hispanic guy on the platform, and he was really stumbling through his, his uh, good old heritage language. <laughs> All right, so before we get into any of the top 10 funnies, uh, general observations on the Democratic debate. Um, Trump won just by not being there. It, they, it, you know, it was a clown car. It, we've always expected it was going to be a clown car. They scream socialism. That's not going to be helpful to their cause. And frankly, I don't think we learned anything. We were all hoping to learn something. Um, I think some candidates learned a few things uh, on the stage with their with their competitors, but I don't think America learned anything new. All right, so who should we begin with? Who really stuck out in terms of saying inane platitudes and uh, bizarre comments? Well, let's go back to Castro. He he wants to give trans women who are male and have no female reproductive organs uh, reproductive rights. So not sure where he was going with that, but he trotted down the transgender trendy aisle and he wandered around in the dark for a while. I thought that was pretty hilarious. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. That ended up being a topic today. A couple of people were asking me, what are reproductive rights for transgenders? But let's not go down that road. What else did you spot? Um, the schooling uh, by Tulsi Gabbard of who actually attacked uh, on 9-11. <laughs> it was Al-Qaeda, the Taliban so much. So that's that's a point in her in her direction. She, we checked Mark, uh, okay, she knows her history a little bit better than some of the field. Um, and I think I think uh, Elizabeth Warren did, did relatively well, but also because nobody threw a hard question at her. How hard is it to say free stuff for everyone? And, you know, that's about all we got out of her. It seems like Tulsi Gabbard made mincemeat out of Ryan. I, I thought she did a really good job, but Warren seemed uh, very angry all night. She had that Hillary anger going. <laughs> yeah, I. but I think she wanted to be on the stage with the big boys and she got, you know, the B team. So that could have been her problem. Plus. You know, tomorrow, tonight, the, the second round is going to eclipse whatever happened yesterday. So her her big shot was in and out within, you know, a 24-hour news cycle. 
nobody's going to be talking about her. Sarah, what did you make of Amy Klobuchar? She, you know, she had the best line of the night. Well, at least the 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 best applause line of the night when she said, "All that Donald Trump does is sit in the Oval Office and gloat," and it it was a big, you know, a big happy meter for the for the liberal left, but. In actuality, it means he's sitting there gloating because he's accomplished so much. You don't gloat over some, something that you haven't done well. Uh, so I thought, I thought that was kind of ironic coming from Klobuchar. Um, then we had Cory Booker, who must have mentioned about 15 times that he lives in a poor neighborhood. Does he expect brownie points? I think he does, since he's, you know, they're all railing against corporate America and the wealthy. So, you know, heck. I mean, I could go toe to toe with him on living in, you know, <laughs> a poorer neighborhood than most, but I live in the Midwest and, you know, I could be living next door to a mansion in a shack and it's no difference. We all just sort of uh, enjoy that diversity, as they would say. Well, speaking of diversity, I thought it was interesting that uh, de Blasio felt it necessary to tell a national audience that he's raising a son who happens to be black. Uh, what was the point of that? Actually, if I was his son, I, I might have been a little pissed. <laughs> I don't think his son is old enough to, to be mad yet, but I have a feeling that down the road he's going to go, yep, what the hell, are you just using me as a pawn? That's what I thought it was. You know, hey, let's, let's talk about I have a, you know, Hispanic neighbor and I live next door to a Muslim and, oh, my God, my kid's black. Come on, you know, just talk issues. Nobody talked issues. They avoided them, handily avoided them. Yeah, it sort of felt to me a little like I have a really good friend who's gay. Yeah, exactly, exactly like that. Uh, it, it seemed to be on the other side of the aisle. We had uh, Chucky Todd and his bald spot or his strange thing going on with his hair. Even my husband noticed. I, I don't know, is it a comb forward or a comb over? I mean, I mean we're politics. we can talk about this. I don't know, I think it's a, it's a comb around, it looked like, kind of a comb around. Uh, there's no camouflaging the shiny spot. And, and frankly, it looked like he might have stuck his head in the toilet bowl and flushed before he went on TV. I don't, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm not sure that anybody else uh, agrees with me. But yeah, that was a, that was a basic, distraction that and their their uh, technical difficulties that had everybody giggling and laughing oh my gosh talk about amateur hour you know that that was striking to me that network tv they couldn't find an audio man who could figure out how to work the microphones yeah yeah um the biggest event you know in a year and you're hosting it live and you can't pull it off <laughs> it was nuts. It was nuts. It really was. Well, it seemed to me like uh, the most loaded questions came from uh, Chuck Todd and the most bizarre answers. I don't know. Who do you think those might have come from? The bizarre answers? All of them. Every one of them. It, it was, you know, babbling in Spanish. It's like, press one for English for my answer. Press two to hear me babble. Uh, you know, it was randomly weird. It was, you know, you thought all of a sudden you were watching Telemundo instead of watching NBC. Um, they all dodged around. They used buzzwords all night long. They danced around and bashed Trump. I don't think they got a good solid policy out of anybody or how to pay for any good programs that they want to come up with. I didn't hear a thing on that. It sort of seemed to me like they were coming from an alternate reality. I think they've been coming from an alternate reality since 2016, <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion. Again, <laughs> they, don't, they don't seem to be rooted to the ground like the rest of us. How, how would you, well, what grade would you give the debate so far? Expectable. I mean, it's a C average. Everybody did what everybody expected them to do, but nobody went up and, and, and raised the bar. Nobody came out and drew a line in the sand and said, beat me, I dare you, I double dog dare you. And it, it, you know, we're so distracted with the Spanish speaking random stuff. Um, heck, even Marianne Williamson, who um, wasn't on the stage night one, texted out, oh my gosh, I need to learn Spanish in 24 hours. <laughs> you know, more people were focused on that than asking how the heck 
they were going to, you know, what they were going to do to beat Donald Trump, what they were going to do to improve the country, why the country was so screwed up. I mean, you know, in their eyes, we have a mess on our hands. Um, in the eyes of conservatives, the economy's booming. People are happy. You had protesters outside, um, Cuban American immigrants, who were all over hanging hanging signs up and right across from from the um, from the venue, which was a performing arts venue. What better place to have a bunch of clowns performing for an audience at the performing arts venue? And you know they were hanging banners that said no socialism, no communism. We like capitalism. So I'm not really sure that night one or two went off without a hitch. But let's remember the economy. Uh, oh, it's only working for the rich people. That's why we can't find a garbage man. All righty, thank you very much, Sarah. Any final thoughts? Uh, I can't wait until the next round and <laughs> see who's see who's winnowed out of the field and who will say the next dumbest thing in Spanish or um, perhaps another language, maybe Farsi. I'm not sure. Thanks so much. And in the words of uh, Castro, hasta luego, amiga. Adios, mi amiga. Thanks so much, Sarah, for joining us. Bye. See ya. Truth is making a comeback. Visit us at libertynation.com.